So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this Jupyter session, especially for HKDSU students. Uh, I'm sure you have a fruitful morning to get a lot of information about uh, admissions and also program information. So I guess a lot of students um, uh, have already visited some of the information sessions of other institutions, and you must have a lot of chance to get a lot of information. But do you have the time to pause a bit and then think about what kind of university life you would like to pursue? So um, before we go into this details, um, we are happy to have Professor Bennett Yim, our Director of Undergraduate Admissions, and Kyle and also our alumni and either our students to share with you about their university life. So. Um, okay, so how about I will start with Ida uh, and also Kyle first. Can you talk a bit about your DSE experience, how you choose your university and uh, what, what kind of like, decisions you, you, you would like to pursue for university life? So I will start first. So my name is Ida. I'm a year three student uh, doing Bachelor of Arts with a double major in English Studies and Politics and Public Administration. So data back to my secondary school day, I was doing BFS, Economic and History for my uh, HKDSE. So as you may be able to tell from my electives that uh, my strength and interest lie on humanity subjects. So when I was like doing my or considering my study options in for university, then I also go into the fields of like similar areas. So um, then you might ask like why HKU then? Because like Hong Kong has so many universities also offer English or politics major. But then you don't usually see like a student doing English and politics at the same time. So this is like what really HKU can offer to me because of its very flexible curriculum design. So like this is why I chose uh, HKU, yeah. How about Kyle? Kyle. Yeah, okay, hi guys, um, this is Kyle and I graduated in uh, 2019 and um, I did Bachelor of um, Business Administration, double majoring in Marketing and Wealth Management. So um, tracing back uh, in my uh, high school life, I did um, Biology, Chemistry and Economics as my uh, electives. And uh, among those three electives, I uh, like economics the most. And um, because um, back then, I, 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 th I thought um, it uh, allows me to explain so many different happenings in my daily life. It's very relatable to uh, or what ha happened to, uh, around me. And, then, and I thought uh, I, I may want to further my study in the related field uh, at university. And, and since then, I started to uh, compare different uh, business programs across different universities in Hong Kong. And, and I f uh, eventually landed in HKU for um, three reasons. Uh, first of all, I mean, um, Hong Kong U is the, um, the most historical um, university in Hong Kong. And I don't think uh, anyone can beat the alumni network in uh, HKU. And that's, um, that's uh, the first reason. And secondly, um, the um, senior, uh, senior told me that because I, I have a lot of um, friends uh, studying in HKU already back then. And then they told me that, oh, uh, is studying in HKU, you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of freedom to choose what, what, what you like. And then it's very important for your business career. And, and, and yeah. And last but not least, and, um, you, you know, there's always a time when you are uh, getting into HKU and then you've, you've, you feel so full of yourself and then you're always knocked out by um, another smart Hong Kong viewer. And I think uh, looking back, and that is one of the reasons why I choose Hong Kong U. Yeah. So Professor Yim, you see uh, from Kyle and Ida, we have like students from different backgrounds and different uh, experiences. So how can our university support our students? Well, I think uh, based on the, their description, certainly they mentioned quite a, a very diversified experience that they had and, and also like uh, different kind of discipline that actually they want to pursue. So I think for the university, the most important thing, of course, is to have a student center uh, kind of design for our curriculum and also uh, to make sure we have the same flexible teaching environment to actually support it. And in fact, you think about like uh, students spending four years at the university 
And uh, if you only give them a cookie cutter type of like uh, curriculum, so that everybody pretty much follow the same thing, uh, they go to the same class, they actually like uh, follow the same timetable, they just earn the credit and then get uh, graduate. I think it's definitely not what Hong Kong you want to offer to our student. And so I guess uh, you also probably hear like uh, recently we used the slogan, uh, aspire to inspire. So I think that actually said a lot about uh, what Hong Kong you intended to do, which is to inspire our student to uh, kind of like uh, seek for their passions, uh, their interests, and also hopefully they find their aims and goals in life and during the four year. And at the same time, uh, we certainly hope that they can inspire others uh, through the knowledge that they have uh, acquired at the university. And then uh, that, that way they can pass on Hong Kong youth legacies and the, uh, all this like, uh, history and legacies of Hong Kong youth. Uh, so I, I guess like, uh, uh, the two students also mentioned something about the flexible uh, curriculum. I think uh, Hong Kong youth has always been known for the flexibility in our curriculum design. And that means like, uh, we can offer our students plenty of opportunity to actually explore their different uh, interests, uh, their different kind of like uh, uh, discipline that they probably uh, can also integrate their knowledge with maybe their career orientation. And that way they will be able to kind of like, uh, I mean, have a personalized uh, study throughout the four year. So like, uh, even though like uh, back then when I was choosing my university study, I had not had a, a ballot, uh, the synergizing study experience that Professor Yim just talked about, but like looking like looking back into like my two year study in XKU, I find that what Professor Yim suggests like uh, fits very well with my like university experience. So to take my own case in point, um, my first uh, my first major is uh, English studies, which is like from my uh, the art faculty. Then my second major is on politics. So like. Uh, which is like out of my faculty. So in other words, like if students doing a Bachelor of Arts degree, they can uh, do their second uh, major out of like the art faculty, but in like also the faculty that intrigues you the most. And so uh, how one plus one uh, is greater than two, uh, it's, great, it's, it's greater than two is that uh, like uh, both politics and English, they study about humanity subjects, but while when I take them together, then I can look into things from uh, different angles and so that I could uh, have a, a fuller, wider scope and pictures to see things. So I think this really uh, widened my horizon and would definitely open up me with like opportunities in terms of the career or a postgraduate post uh, study. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think actually, like, either certainly, like, uh, have just, hello, I mean, basically speak out the, uh, the key message we want to convey to our potential student. Because like, from her experience and even earlier from uh, Kyle's experience, uh, our student uh, at Hong Kong U, they can choose uh, like up to like, two major and one minor. And the fact that they can uh, not only like, choose the number in terms of like, the number of major, but at the same time, they can choose very diverse major. Mm -hmm. And I think the point we really want to make is uh, when you have this opportunity, to do like uh, multiple major and particularly those major that are in diverse field and in very different faculty, then uh, this kind of different elements uh, from the different subject area probably not only complement each other, but they also kind of have the synergy effect as Ida just mentioned. So uh, I think we definitely like uh, see the benefit of the one plus one actually greater than two rather than just simply two. Can Kyle also mention like some of your study uh, curriculum and share with us our, your experience? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, so um, in my undergraduate study, I did wealth management, and that's basically about how to manage uh, clients, your, uh, people's money. Um, it, it covers like um, portfolio management, like um, stock analysis, and um, and um, maybe estate planning and uh, those uh, financial kind of stuff. And another major that I did is um, marketing. And that's basically about um, um, how to position your business in the market, like, like uh, service marketing and um, expose yourself to like, um, to like uh, 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 advertising kind of stuff. And um, yes, and, and just as uh, uh, Professor Yim said, uh, it offers me different angles and different perspectives to approach a problem. And it is uh, particularly important uh, uh, in my uh, career because I, I'm starting a, 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 a startup uh, at, during my um, year three in HKU, yeah. 
Carl has mentioned something that I really want mm. to like mention. You you got this startup startup experience, yeah. and it's very unique. Can you tell us more about your yeah, how yeah, how sure. you started up, and then why do you have this opportunity to do this? Things right, like right. that. Um, um, before we tap into my startup story, I would like to share my experience on my experience on uh, in um, participation in. Um, uh, drama production. So uh, back in um, year two, I joined the drama society in HKU. And then, um, you know, back then I'm so, um, so uh, close to the people that share similar background with me. Those are the financial people who are constantly looking at the um, stock market. They um, calculate the return on investment every day. And yeah, and then, and when I join in this this uh, production crew in drama society, and it give, it gives me um, huge impact on my life. That oh, there are actually some kind of people who devote their time without asking for any return, and that's kind of inspired me. It maybe I put it this way: it opens up my uh, horizons of like looking at things from a like, different perspective, and then. Um, and then my friends uh, returned from their exchange. And the story is that they mm, kind of mess up the course registration, and they have to defer their studies. Mm -hmm. And the problem they bump into is that um, they, they had a hard time reconnecting to the community. And that's why we started a um, platform called Goop, G-O-P, which is a campus chat app for university students. But, so, um, by verifying their university emails, the system will route them into different communities based on their identity. For example, if you're an HKU student, so uh, the app is going to allocate you to the uh, community of HKU where you can uh, chat with all the uh, HKU people. And the community is exclusive. And so um, by applying the same logic, we have presence in um, every single campus in Hong Kong. And luckily, uh, one in three university students in Hong Kong is now our Users, so um, yes, from this experience, I like to bring it up that oh, perhaps I can be an uh, inspiration someday to inspire people to uh, to um, jump out of their comfort zone to try something different because of um, all the things that I have experienced in HKU. Yeah, because um, you know all the uh, possibilities they all start from a conversation, and that's why we want to host this platform to enable more um, visualization of domain knowledge and more social possibilities. Mm. Well, I think Kyle's like, uh, kind of sharing is very interesting, particularly about the startup. I'm sure like this day many of our students will also really want to have your kind of experience. And also, I think in, in today's society, we oftentimes uh, hear people talking about like new technology, uh, breakthrough, cutting edge, like research and kind of various kind of things. And uh, we also seeing many of the uh, uh, traditional kind of industry also talking about they have to modify uh, or modernize like themselves. And uh, so I guess like uh, talking about like uh, all these different demand, it, it's kind of get me thinking, uh, I mean, the kind of society, the kind of people that a society looking for is uh, quite different from what we used to think. Uh, so in the past, we tend to think about maybe just need to have uh, more knowledge. And now I think the requirement is uh, you need to be able to integrate that knowledge and actually put it to practice, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess like allow me to maybe like uh, use this use this opportunity to uh, share some interesting uh, new development in in terms of our program because uh, as Kyle and Ida were saying, like uh, I mean, increasingly the society is looking for people who can integrate uh, different disciplines together. And so in last year, actually, like we have introduced the whole family of uh, BASC program. And so in there, uh, of course, we have uh, some of the more popular focus, uh, like the artificial intelligence and fintechs and, and those. Uh, but at the same time, we also have other very interesting area like uh, Design Plus and also just uh, kind of like uh, the global uh, health development as well. And then last year, we also have introduced a cross uh, kind of uh, faculties uh, program called GEBP, which is a global engineering and business uh, program. And that program allowed uh, the student to be able to integrate knowledge from engineering uh, and business. And again, it's like it fit very well with our focus on like the one plus one greater than two. So I guess like uh, those are programs that will continue to offer this year. 
and hopefully like uh, some of the students who are interested in this program can look into that in more details. Thank you, Professor Yim. So, Kyle, I know that um, you haven't got a chance to go for exchange, but you have some overseas experience. What, yeah. what are they? Yeah, yeah. so um, back then I joined a lot of case competitions. So perhaps I can uh, give you more context on what case competition is. So basically case competition is a competition where the organizers um, throw you a uh, question, a certain issue for you to solve. And then uh, each and every team, they have to propose ideas and solutions, uh, usually in form of um, PowerPoint, to uh, explain how you tackle that uh, issue. So uh, back then, I joined a uh, case competition that is about uh, sustainability. It's about the sustainability goals defined by the United Nations. And then we uh, fortunately won the, um, the uh, round in Hong Kong. And then we were fortunate enough to uh, fly all the way over to Canada to join the global uh, finals. And then that was really a mind-blowing experience because um, when I recall this memory, I still vividly remember one of the um, ideas that I, I, I heard is, is, uh, uh, is from UBC. And they, they're proposing an idea to, of, of, um, of a ranch uh, full of crickets. So what they, do, what, what they did with crickets is that they proposed that, oh, um, because so much carbon emissions are from ranches. When you, you know, raise pigs and horses and stuff, they um, produce a lot of uh, carbons, and that's not very good to the environment. And by um, raising crackers, they, I mean, they actually propose like uh, grinding the crackers into powders, and then you eat them with rice. So as crazy as this idea may seem, it is actually uh, not some, um, not some, uh, you know, uh, 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 um, not some very fancy ideas. It's actually backed by a lot of um, uh, scientific studies in, in foreign countries already. And then, and, and amazingly, and I have never heard of it in Hong Kong. And this lesson taught me that, oh, I may, sometimes may have to um, take in information from different sources, from global sources. And um, fortunately, um, over this competition, another takeaway is that I got to build a lot of uh, global connections. And for example, um, I actually had an um, office in, uh, I, ha I still have an office in, in Indonesia. And, and when I was um, doing a business trip there, and the friend that I knew from that case competition, um, she is uh, actually from Indonesia. And then uh, we still uh, uh, keep in touch. And when I was in, in Jakarta, and we actually uh, hang out because, you know, of the occasion. That's very interesting. So Ida, I know that you have a very fruitful university life at this moment still, and then you're planning ahead for something. So can you tell us what is your experience? Sure, like indeed I did a uh, like, couple of things like during the whole uh, university journey. So maybe I would start with uh, when I was in year one. Uh, my linguistic professor, he invited me to his uh, linguistic research project. So I was his like research assistant uh, as an undergraduate. And so the job duties include uh, like uh, uh, data collection, transcription, uh, assisting uh, uh, for his like focus group and some data an analysis. And what surprised me is that uh, this experience actually like correlates with my second major in politics because like this semester I took a course about political research methods. So when I was studying about like sampling design methods, research methods, then I feel like uh, I'm, I'm, I already know about it because I already have like hands-on experience experience of like working in an actual academic project so uh, this like again like reminds me like oh one plus one is greater than two because like I'm not just doing two majors separately they are, there are some like intersections between the two majors and uh, yeah so this is like my first thing I, the, th the very first thing that I accomplished in university so maybe I can talk about something not very academic related uh, like last last winter, I actually went on a leadership development program co-organized by Common Purpose and HKU. So this program is a one-month program to Malaysia uh, Kuala Lumpur. So on the f very 
uh, first few days we uh, went to some uh, leadership uh, training workshop. Then for the rest of the trip, uh, we actually are attached to some company. And for me and my team, we uh, actually went to multinational companies and work in their marketing and communication departments to help them solve some internal and external communi uh, communication problems in their company. So I think the whole trip is uh, very rewarding and fruitful. And I think there are three major takeaways from the trip. The first is like friendships. So I don't know uh, if people out there who are also doing a, a, like a broad-based program would feel that that actually uh, because like the Bachelor of Arts, there are so many students. So it's hard to like really have a, uh, a very close relationship or friendship to make. While in this trip, because like in one month, you always see the, the people uh, and then you live together and we make uh, weekend trips together. So it really like, uh, these are really great friendships. And in the program, around like 40 students, uh, half of them are local and half are international. So you get to meet people from like, you know, different academic backgrounds, nationality and culture. So this is a, a really great uh, experience to me and it gains me like really uh, great friendship. And the second thing is like, the, the trip equips me with some like soft skill, like, um, presentation skills, uh, leadership, and teamwork that really facilitate me to you know, improve in my academic uh, performance. And also I think it's definitely useful for my future career uh, developments. And the third thing is it gives me your career aspirations because uh, I get to like attached in a marketing communication department and I like start to find, oh, actually I'm interested in these views as well. So you give me your career aspiration and also at the same time it enrich my CV and the experience actually helped me land a pretty good uh, summer internship uh, just last summer. So, uh, so that's why like, I definitely recommend if you uh, are meeted in XKU, definitely join programs of similar kind. And XKU is very generous. Actually, for this program, they sponsor us with uh, 4,000 XKD dollars. So it helps a lot. And apart from what I did before, uh, I actually am also like, taking uh, taking up the role as a logistic coordinate, coordinator for uh, the hot price at HKU. So what is the hot price? Hot price is actually co-organized by the hot price itself and also United Nations. It is like the world's uh, biggest student entrepreneur competition. So uh, a bit like uh, correlated to what just Carl mentioned, he joined some case competitions. So in this event, actually you can join the competition or you can help organize the competition. So uh, in university actually have like so many like roles to take and so uh, in these like experience uh, I get to learn like skills about and knowledge about event planning management something like not necessarily that I get to learn from my major study or like just sitting in lectures so uh, this is like some great opportunities and activities to you know like explore yourself more and learn more things and lastly I know like our students we're all very look forward to, you know, our overseas exchange opportunity. So I'm no exception. In fact, I was supposed to be in Boston College uh, next semester, but unfortunately due to the pandemic, uh, all physical exchange programs are canceled uh, this acad acad academic year, but still I applied for next year program. So like hopefully when things like get mired, I'll be able to, you know, make the trip because um, I think like, Joining an overseas exchange is not just about having fun, but also like you can like widen your horizon, you get a global insight and you expand your network. So these are the things uh, that uh, what makes our overseas exchange a, a very worthwhile and fruitful experience. So w just out of my yeah. curiosity, <laughs> which university have you applied for your next semester? Oh, I actually applied for Northwestern University because mm. like a Boston college that I got the offer, they're not in the next year's institution list. So mm. I, yeah, I have to change, uh, change the option a bit, but still, yeah. Mm. Well, Northwestern is a very interesting uh, university. I, I do hope the uh, pandemic actually situation will improve greatly so that Ida can actually fulfill her dream of going on exchange. Yeah. So, so just like uh, I think Ida uh, and many of our students certainly like uh, really, really enjoy their exchange life study. And uh, to me, I think it's also a very important experience, as Ida mentioned. Uh, not only like uh, you get to see uh, many different things, uh, meet many different people, but you also can spend uh, more, more, a longer period of time to actually understand more about the, the culture 
and also like uh, it gives you a very different like uh, uh, international perspective. And this uh, perspective oftentimes is uh, more, more appealing to uh, your future employer. And uh, certainly, uh, well, but at the same time, I think well, Hong Kong U is certainly very supportive of this uh, globalization and internationalization kind of move. Uh, also, at the same time, uh, increasingly you may hear people are saying this day uh, you need to go from uh, globalization to uh, globalization, which is uh, combining the globalization with localization. So, so we do hope our students will be able to integrate uh, their international experience uh, from the exchange at the same time integrate those with their local experience and so that they can kind of gain more benefit. And uh, in, in fact, like for Hong Kong U to achieve this objective of helping our students to uh, be more like globalized and at the same time localized, uh, we also uh, focus on uh, joining or actually joining a farming partnership uh, with many of the uh, renowned, like world-renowned university to actually open uh, a kind of offering dual uh, degree uh, program. And uh, Kyle earlier just happened to mention like uh, Canada and UBC, and it, it's just quite interesting. This year, one of our new, brand new like dual degree uh, program is actually with UBC, and this time we are with the UBC's uh, very famous uh, Childers uh, Business School, and this is a program between the HKU Business School and the Southern Business School. Uh, so, so again, uh, it fit very well, the, the one plus one, and hopefully. Uh, our student uh, who actually joined this program will be able to kind of gain benefit that actually beyond the two. Yeah. Mm. So, just now, like Kyle and also Ida are more of a humanity types of students, but we how about those like for students interested in science or research? How is the university going to support them? Well, uh, yes, of course, most people would think like uh, being just an undergraduate student. Uh, unlike our postgraduate student or maybe our doctoral student, then uh, usually, of course, their work are focused more on the research. But in fact, my understanding is even for our undergraduate student uh, at Hong Kong U, they do have uh, quite often opportunity to join research, academic research, maybe scientific research. And uh, because I know many of the professors, uh, when they have like a research project, they would also be giving uh, opportunity to our student to join as a research assistant. Uh, but actually, students who are really interested in uh, kind of joining research, uh, even in their undergraduate study, you don't have to wait any longer. Uh, because this coming year, uh, our science faculty will actually be introducing a brand new uh, course. And, and this program is uh, a double degree uh, program. And what the student will get after four years is one Bachelor of Science degree plus a Master in Research degree. So the student actually get two degrees. And the name of this program uh, is called Science Master Class. Now from the name, uh, I don't know like, uh, whether you, you, you figure out like, how we actually kind of name this program this way. Maybe some of you will think about, oh, because you have a master degree. But in fact, that master is uh, not referring to the master degree, but actually referring to a very unique aspect of this program, which is the student will be under supervision by our very world-renowned scientists at the faculty of uh, uh, science and this uh, are we call like the grand master master in in research and so this student will have the opportunity to be directly supervised by many of our grand master and master within the faculty of uh, science so that's why I think that the name actually reflect this really well and I think it's a very very rare occasion that our undergraduate student can have this opportunity uh, in order to be uh, kind of supervised directly by many of our renowned scientists. And the student can actually choose from uh, one of the seven uh, intensive major when they actually enter this program. So uh, basically, those intensive major including biological sciences, uh, chemistry, ecology, and biodiversity, uh, geology, molecular biology, and biotechnology. And of course, we also have uh, our physics and also mathematics. And uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this program is really intense for students who want to get a head start on learning about research opportunity and they will be supervised by uh, many of our superstar uh, scientists. Uh, here there are so many of them, I don't have enough time to mention all of them, so allow me to just mention two that maybe uh, many uh, of the people are more familiar with, including uh, Professor Vivian Yam and also Professor Mok Lai Ming. And Professor Yam uh, is actually uh, kind of focused on chemistry and Professor uh, Mock is actually uh, 
focus on mathematics. And uh, both of them have received uh, many different awards, and particularly like uh, for Professor Yang, uh, recently maybe in the news media, you have heard that like uh, she had been appointed as uh, one of the very important and influential journal being the editor in charge of uh, examining all the research in chemistry. And uh, that journal is called uh, Natural Sciences. And uh, this is a great honor, uh, I mean, to be appointed a, uh, the editor of a very, very important journal. Yeah. So thank you, Professor Kim, for the very detailed explanation of this mas science masterclass. I also noticed that like in Faculty of Medicine, they're having something new. So. Can Professor Yim also mention about this? Okay, thank you, uh, Vanessa. Uh, actually, yes, uh, we just got the news like, uh, I mean, very recently. Uh, so for students who are interested in the healthcare field, so uh, particularly if those uh, students are interested in uh, studying like nursing, then we have very good news for you because uh, the, the medical school is uh, proposing a new program for uh, bee nursing and it's called Bee Nursing uh, Advanced Leadership Track. But, uh, allow me not to review too much detail at this point because uh, I don't want to steal the thunder from the medical school. So those students who are interested in this uh, bee nursing new track, please stay tuned for the talk offered by uh, the medical school. And uh, so you'll be able to learn more about like, this ex exciting new program. So just let me uh, to re-emphasize that like, the talk for nursing is uh, 2.45. So if you finish this talk and then you're interested in nursing, then please go to attend that session. So before the students can uh, really have questions to ask, uh, during this time, may I also give you some admissions updates uh, for this year. So uh, you will see uh, we have three updates. The first one is the restructuring of the surveying and conservation studies. So for conservation studies, next year you, you will not see this JUPAS code and uh, JUPAS program. It will be subsumed into surveying. That means with the surveying curriculum, uh, there will be elements of conservation studies and other uh, different disciplines. So the quota for this program, for the surveying program, will be increased to 43 instead. So if students are interested in conservation studies, please apply to surveying, okay? So the second point is um, we have some early interviews like for uh, programs like engineering and engineering related programs and um, MBBS, the medicine program. These two programs, they will have their online interview in December. So if students are really interested in these programs, please apply and put it in your band A uh, in the first stage of your JUPAS application. And while other programs, they still have interview, but then um, it will be like organized and held, uh, will, be hold in, will be held in uh, June or, or somewhere around that time. So stay tuned to our website as well. So for scholarship, um, last year we have some new scholarship for specific programs and this year we, we will keep on with all, um, having some scholarships for uh, DSU students in particular like uh, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Social Sciences, uh, BASC, the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences and also um, uh, some common programs and some caring programs like uh, nursing, social work and education. So please stay tuned with our scholarship details and you will be able to apply to our scholarship in November. So stay tuned to our website as well. So after all these updates, um, I will take some questions. And um, so meanwhile, uh, should we have... So this question is about major selection. So I think it should be directed to either. Uh, the student is asking if there, if there are any restrictions or uh, like GPA criteria for your major, for declaring your major. And if you choose another major offered by another faculty, do you need to compete with those students from that faculty? 
Okay, so for major selection, actually, a uh, student like from doing the Bachelor of Arts, we usually we declare our major in our second year. But then, we for most of the majors, as far as I know, there aren't many restrictions or like criteria like GPA. But there are there like for in the Faculty of Art, there's still like some kind of like restriction, but not on the GPA. For example, for like my first major in English studies. Uh, you need to have uh, at least level five in your English DSE English. And for another popular uh, major like translation, you need to have at least uh, five in both your English and uh, Chinese uh, DSE exam. So other than this two, I think uh, for most of the majors, there aren't any like restrictions on that. So uh, you, need, you just need not to be worried about that. Yeah. Hmm. There is a question directed to Kyle. So um, the student is asking, how, how can you manage your studies along with so many things that happening in your university life, like overseas uh, case competition and then start a project? Would it be very tired? And do you have any tips on how to manage your, your, your life? Um, yeah, um, uh, thanks for the question. And I think um, fulfilling is um, more, more appropriate word to, to describe my experience because um, although my um, schedule is full of different tasks, but um, my studies and my own company, they are all the things that I would like to do. And so, uh, so I think it's, it's all right, not, not too tiring for me, still can manage that. And yeah, and, um, and definitely I'm not a master of uh, time management, but how I um, manage to uh, cope with different tasks is that I've tried to be specific on what I need to do, uh, especially during my undergraduate. And I tr try to define different tasks that I have to finish every day. For example, if I have to uh, revise um, economics, and so I, I, I define contrary, say uh, I, I'm going to clear all the lec about like five lectures a day or maybe uh, 10 tutorial questions and handle uh, and some other different tasks about my, my startups. And then gradually you, you, you come to know more about yourself, about your capabilities of how much you can handle in a day. And then, yeah, I mean, gradually you, 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 you come to a point of, uh, you know, uh, to to get to know more about yourself and how to handle uh, different, different, different tasks. Yeah. It's all about experience. Hmm. There is also a follow-up question on, on the startup. So in terms of like career prospect in the field of science and technology innovation, would that be not very stable? After all, the, like nowadays in, with the economic downturn, so having a startup business is, seems more difficult than it is. Is it more safe to study like those relatively stable uh, bachelor degrees? Right, um, uh, yeah, thanks for the question again. So I think compared with uh, the situation in the previous year, the uh, things now have uh, become, uh, I mean, there are more support in society already to, to um, nurture you, to foster you, to start your own business. For example, just funding a cyber port and that definitely we have Ident drawn in HKU, you know, supporting you to uh, 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 start off your, uh, your business. So uh, I think uh, for the instability, I think yes, yes and no, because uh, eventually it's, it's a startup, it's the things that uh, no one has done it before. So there are a lot of uh, uncertainties ahead. So yes, you can word it this way, but then and I think um, the reward from a startup is uh, actually huge. You have to, you also have to factor factor in this. Uh, I mean, um, there are a lot of ways you can um, you can benefit from starting a business. For example, financially, you can uh, if you you're, you're you're good enough, you're fortunate enough, you can take it into take it to IPO. And and I also have a friend who uh, did that. Who start up? Who start off their business for like one or two years, and then they exited. They sold it to an investors or some institution, and they um, went back to work in um, MNC. And that's 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 also um, an advantage. And I mean, um, 
um, from a personal perspective, um, I mean, when you're in a business, uh, you're in a, in a startup business, you are exposed to a hugely uh, diversified of uh, business function. For example, from um, building your startup, you have to know about prototyping, about um, statistic, about user study, and then product development, and then monetization, and then human resources, fundraising, et cetera, and et cetera. So you will have a very steep learning curve, and it's, uh, it's uh, definitely um, good for your personal development. And, and the question is, oh, uh, is it more safe to study those relatively more ordinary bachelor degrees? And I think um, it's actually hard to define what a um, safer degree is because uh, at the end of the day, uh, a degree uh, can just provide you with a um, certain set of framework for you to look at different perspective. At the end of the day, it all takes uh, what, what it takes to uh, it takes you to success is, is um, your, your passion, your your persistence towards a certain issues. I, I think, um, yeah, it, that that is more important. Hmm. There is also a question directed to, like either either or Kyle because it it asked about the major thing, so. Um, is it um, if you can only declare like majors in second year, does that mean that you have a year less on studying that major and have a year wasted? Mm. Yeah, maybe I can answer this question. So I would definitely not call like this is a year wasted. Instead, I think it is a great opportunity for you to you know explore yourself in this first year, like in a lower pressure year that you can explore your, your all kinds or aspects of interest uh, and you know really find where your like genuine academic interest lies on. Uh, take myself as an example, I have a wide range of interests. I'm interested in politics, uh, journalism, philosophy, English. So because for English I already set my mind to it, so I am like quite determined on that. So for my three other interests, like in my year one, I take courses in, in these disciplines and eventually find out like journalism is, is not really my thing because like news reporting has to be like very subjectively uh, written, uh, the reports. So uh, for myself, I'm more like into uh, uh, argumentative essays. So uh, for that, then I know like politics and philosophy are my things. So, but then the dilemma is that I can only like declare two majors. So uh, what I do is uh, I try to look into uh, politics and find out uh, there is a stream uh, specifically on political the uh, theory, which is about political philosophy. So it just perfectly combined my two interests into one. And that's why I, uh, uh, I, I, I was able to like, locate uh, which two majors I should declare. So yeah, definitely not a waste, but like a great opportunity to you know know yourself better. Hmm. So some of the questions I think is directed to Professor mm. Yin because uh, they're asking about like the science master degree, mm. the the science master class. So after getting the bachelor degree from science master class, is there any requirement on GPA before I can proceed to my master degree? And there is two more questions. Follow up is like the quota of this program and also can the students go for exchange? Okay, maybe I'll answer the, uh, the last question first So, uh, because I think students are quite interested in exchange. So mm -hmm. the answer is yes, you can still go on exchange uh, like even though you choose this uh, kind of more, more rigorous program. And then in terms of the quota, uh, I think according to the faculty, the quota for this uh, science, master, science master uh, program should be around 15 to uh, 20. And then uh, I think the big question about uh, whether you need to meet any other requirements like before you can move on to the master, the answer is no, uh, because this is a more integrated program. So even starting from the second year, as I mentioned earlier, the student uh, would be taking like uh, a master level courses. Of course, these uh, courses will be more integrated, like uh, with the uh, like the undergraduate curriculum, and so. Uh, I mean, basically, uh, there's no other requirement after you join the program. So as long as you, you kind of progressing, then uh, you'll be getting a two degree, yeah. Okay. There are some of the questions about, um, like, 
also DSE subjects. Like I study bi biology and also English literature, and I'm interested in dentistry. So can I apply? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, you, you only need to have one science subject to apply for dentistry. So if you are having like biology and English literature, uh, I'm sure you can still apply for dentistry. Okay, do I need to apply for the Jupiter Scholarship separately? Uh, the answer is also yes, because we would like not only to see from your scores, but also your personal statements and also some of your extracurricular achievements so that we can assess you like all roundly. So uh, you have to apply to us and you can refer to all the details uh, in our website uh, after, uh, in November. Okay, so a very good question. What's the difference between double degree and double major? Can I have Professor Yu sure. to talk about this? Okay, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, so if you look at the name, like double degree, uh, so oftentimes it does uh, involve like more than one degree. So for example, the science uh, master class, you get like one uh, bachelor of uh, science. At the same time, you also be getting a master in research. So that's like two degree. Now, the other cases, you can also see, for example, like uh, when we have a uh, double degree with another institution, another world-renowned university, for example, the UBC, uh, Hong Kong U, uh, like the dual degree, uh, then basically you'll be getting one degree from Hong Kong U and then get another degree from uh, UBC. So, but double major, uh, those you will be basically uh, studying all of those in Hong Kong and then you'll be choosing like uh, more than one major. So like either she had uh, two different major like uh, from diff two different faculty. And uh, for Kyle, I think he's two majors within the same faculty. So you can tell, uh, you can choose certainly like if you want to focus in one faculty, you can do that. You can at the same time, you want to do like a cross faculty, you can do the same, yeah. Like maybe I can supplement a bit like for double degree, we have business and law, government and mm. law, and also, uh, uh, literacy studies and law. These kind are these are all called double degrees. And just now, like Professor Yim also mentioned about global engineering and business program, mm. this is also a double degree. And right on this, we have uh, questions on GEBP as well. Mm. So basically, uh, the students would like to know more about what the program is about. Okay, so uh, this is uh, also a, a very interesting uh, program. So the student will spend five years and get two degrees, uh, one from the engineering and the other actually from business. Uh, and also because uh, this is uh, a program that is uh, jointly offered by the two uh, faculty, so the student will be able to actually take advantage of all the uh, extracurricular activity, all the uh, opportunity, for example, like uh, Kyle mentioned, the case competitions, uh, coaching for, for the competitions, and all kinds of other uh, like, uh, kind of uh, interesting uh, experiential learning offered by both faculty. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, there's a, uh, students who are interested in studying English. Can I give some tips for, for this? Yeah, sure. This is like, sort of like a broad question, but like, I get like, students try to like, give some insight yeah, for studying English studies and BA. Um, so to give you more information, like English studies in the Bachelor of Arts, uh, it's actually, it has two streams. One is English studies, which is the one that I'm doing. It's more focused on English literature, but the other one's called uh, language and communications and more on linguistic, which is a more scientific approach to study English language itself. So I think in the first year, like uh, uh, related to the previous questions that, uh, you need to like explore yourself, try different things to see whether you're more like a linguistic person, a literature person, so that uh, in your later years, then you will like uh, have a better choice that you study something that you're really interested in and you uh, with strength with. Uh, and the second tips is probably uh, like if you do an English studies, we have like quite a lot of readings and writing. So uh, hard work and uh, determination as cliche as it sounds like these two things are like much needed so that you can catch up with the reading work and also the essay work yeah mm, okay so i think a lot of students are really interested in going to exchange and also internship because we got a questions asking how soon should i start to look 
or to apply for 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 these elements. Can Kao talk oh, about sure. this? Sure. Um, perhaps I can talk about my story. So my first internship was. Um, during the summer in year one. And I don't think that is a very um, good idea because the you know internship experience, um, in general, they're, they're, they're not that fruitful in, from my perspective. So, uh, but, um, it, but for ordinary career, you, you may have to have uh, some sort of internship maybe from uh, MNC in order to you know open the door to to, to an interview so uh, I suggest that um, you can start looking for an internship uh, from uh, year two onwards I mean uh, try to explore as much as you can during your freshman year because um, after that you, you 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 won't be able to afford the time to do much of an exploration yeah. mm. So maybe the student would like to also know if we Hong Kong U have any like AI or fintech programs to be applied. Yeah, so I, I kind of quickly mentioned earlier uh, within our uh, family of uh, BASC program, in there we have two specialized ones, which is one is uh, uh, focused on AI and then the other one is actually focused on fintech. But uh, again, it's like, uh, besides those two uh, kind of focus uh, student who are if you are interested in uh, design uh, so we have a design plus like uh, within that set of program we also have a global health development also and then if you just kind of say well I, uh, I really like don't have a particular focus at this point I want to really have a, a really multidisciplinary kind of study then you can actually select the uh, just the BASC and then you'll be able to have multiple track uh, actually within that particular uh, program so that you can uh, kind of I mean, explore uh, maybe kind of more across the arts, uh, the science, and even the uh, social sciences. Yeah. Mm, okay. So there is a student asking about program choices. Should I look at the median or lowest quartile scores of Hong Kong U announced, like the admission scores? So I think I can help with answering these questions. Uh, for the admission score, we only release like the upper quartile, the median, and also the lower quartile. We haven't uh, uh, released any lowest score for students uh, to be referenced. So I think like uh, you can definitely refer to the lower quartile uh, for, for, and also uh, median for, for choosing your programs. But there is a strategy for you to like uh, to be considered when you put it in your band A or even A1 or A2 and A3. And it also depends on how the program, like the quota of the program. If the quota of the program is very big, so you can have more confidence in putting in a, a lower quartile or even uh, a score lower than the lower quartile because lower quartile is like the lower 25% and there's still tail afterwards. And then if the program is small, then um, you may need to think, oh, uh, isn't it, do you still have the confidence uh, to put on like your band A1, 2 or 3? So all these Jupyter strategies, I think uh, after your DSE examinations, during our Jupyter Info Week, we will really focus and tackle all these strategies and let you know how you can put your band A choices and how uh, you can take advantage of all these strategies to to have your programs uh, put in your Jupyter application. And also, these two years we have expected score, uh, the scores in which uh, students can reference to. And I think uh, nearer the time, like in June or July, uh, Hong Kong U will will soon have this expected score released to students so that they can be more actualized with how they can put in that jupus. Well, that's, uh, actually, I, I also want to maybe mention, because uh, mm. I often time here, uh, that's a misperception mm. uh, among many of our potential like, uh, students who kind of like really underestimate the chance that they can get into Hong Kong U. So, mm. so I think I would advise students, uh, actually, uh, you, you have to have kind of like uh, uh, higher aims. And uh, so uh, for motivating your study, so I would think, uh, ask you to kind of look into uh, the score more carefully 
And then also, like, uh, I mean, maybe pay attention to uh, later on when we get closer to the, uh, after the exam, we will also be providing very good advice and the expected score and all those things like that you should take into consideration. At the same time, like, don't belittle yourself. I think, mean, uh, look, look aim, aim higher. Mm -hmm. Only if you aim high, then you can achieve higher level. So, yeah. That's a very good advice from Professor Yim. So before we end this session, can I invite like Kyle and also Ida to try to encourage our DSU students a bit? Sure, uh, maybe I'll, I'll start first. Um, and I know uh, HK DSE is a tough task, but then just remember that it's only um, grind that you have to go through and it's only temporary. So um, be um, persistent and um, and just just work hard, and you eventually uh, get to HKU. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that like this year isn't an easy year, and then DSE is like tough. We have all been through it, but then like like Carl said, it's a like temporary pain. So like if you can get through this, then like university life like should be quite like easy for you. Yeah. So like keep up the good work. Yeah. So thank you very much for all your sharing and we'll end this session. Thank you.